In this presentation, we will create an invoice and apply a credit or advanced payment to it. In other words, the scenario is that we had a customer come into the shop. They want a guitar. We sell guitars. We don't have the particular one that they want. We're going to order that guitar for them, but we want a security deposit. They gave us a security deposit or a prepayment on the sale. Now we're going to make the invoice and we need to apply that prepayment to the invoice that we are creating. Get ready because here we go with Sage 50 Cloud Accounting. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. We're going to start off by opening up our reports this time. We're going to go to the reports drop down. We're going to go to the, uh, let's go to the financial statement reports. Open up that balance sheet report. So we're going to be opening up the balance sheet. I'm in the current period for February. That's the one I want. So I'm going to say, okay. And then I'm going to maximize this report. And recall last time that we entered a deposit. So we had a security deposit. It's in accounts receivable, but it's there as a negative receivable. So we have this credit. It's not tying out to anything. So the account, accounts receivable account itself is still positive, showing people owing us money. But it's understated by the 250 uh, until we actually uh, complete the work to, to, re to receive that and enter the invoice that will match out against it. So to see this more clearly, let's take a look at another report. Closing that back out and then opening up, going back to our reports, going to the accounts receivable reports up top. And then we want to take a look at the customer ledger. I'm going to be opening up the customer ledger report. And then in this Anderson, that 250 right there for that particular customer Anderson isn't applied out to anything. So that's the problem. And so it's, it's actually a negative receivable. So that's okay because logistically that works well for us because then while it's in the receivables, we can tie it out to an invoice. So as long as the invoice happens in the same time period and this doesn't cross over the cutoff, we won't have to do any kind of adjusting entry for it. It will be fine. If that is still outstanding and we have not yet issued the invoice as of the cutoff date, then we would need to do an adjusting entry to make the financial statements correct as of the cutoff date, which would be increase in the receivable and uh, increasing our, or increase in the liability. So what we're going to do now is say now, now we have the customer is going is going to purchase the guitar. So here's our scenario. Uh, we the, you know the person came in, they wanted the guitar, we didn't have the color they wanted. So we said, hey, we're going to order it from the vendor, and uh, we want a security deposit. So we had to enter the deposit first. We got money. We got two hundred fifty dollars on the guitar that we haven't not yet delivered, and therefore we got the receipt before the money. So we put that in as a negative receivable. Which again, it's a little bit funny. It kind of it actually means that we owe the customer money, which th normally would be a liability account. It's you know it's really a liability in essence because they gave us money and we owe them something. We owe them the guitar. Now we're going to go back in terms of our flow chart here and go to the first thing, which is usually the first thing where we will create an invoice and then we need to apply out that payment to it. So I'm going to go to the sales item. I'm going to say this is going to be a new uh, sales invoice. Now, this is kind of a two-step process. We will make the invoice and then we'll apply out uh, the credit, the prepayment, the deposit from the customer to it. So we're going to say, I'm just going to say it's a customer ID. I'm going to say it's Anderson. Anderson is this person that uh, if we have this, this deal with that they have made a prepayment for us. And then we're going to go through here and I'm going to say this happened, let's say, on uh, the uh, 18th now or the 19th, something like that. So we'll be fine. And then the invoice, I'm going to put an invoice number just for practice problem here. And then I'm going to go down and we're going to say that we're selling one. It's going to be an ELP. Once again, one of our standard ELPs, but it's that one that was green with like that strap that they wanted. So we're going to have that one. And then we're going to say the sales tax on it is going to be down here. We'll apply the sales tax. Now, here's the amount that's owed, the 547.50, but... Uh, they already paid us the 250. I'm not going to apply that out here on the invoice. We're going to then tie this invoice out to that prepayment. So what is this going to do when we record it? Just like any invoice, it's an invoice. It's going to increase the accounts receivable by that 547.50, but it's going to match out between that that 250. So we got that. Then the other side is going to be going to revenue for the 500. The difference going to the sales tax payable, the 4750, and the inventory is going to be going down by 400 which is driven by this inventory item that's not shown on this report and cost of goods sold goes up by the 400. so let's go ahead and do that so we're going to say save this <clears throat> and then i'll close this back out and then if i look it up the invoice now if i go to this invoice thing and i say i want to view and edit the invoices view and edit the invoices 
I'll make this large. You'll note that this invoice that we have made is not showing any payment on it, right? These two, these two items have been paid. If I was to double click or open an invoice that had been paid and open that up, then it's going to say, hey, it was paid in full. This one right here uh, hasn't been paid yet, even though it's not showing any payment, even though we got 250 on it because we have got it before, you know, they, we made the invoice. So we have to tie that 250 out to it. Now, if we look at the financial statements before we do that, let's take a look at what happened to the financials. Uh, it's going to be the standard, the standard kind of process here. If we open up the balance sheet, we're going to say that the, the accounts receivable went up. So if I double click on the AR, it's going up by that uh, 547.50. And that 250 kind of matches out. It's already matching out in here. You know, this account's already basically correct now. It's just that that 250 isn't applied to that actual invoice. So it's a problem with our, with our matching problem, even though the GL account is basically correct in the receivable at this point in time. So just note that. We still have a problem, but it's kind of correct in, in terms of the end number right here on the financial statements. It is correct. And then the other side is going to be going to the revenue account. So if we were to open up the income statement, let's do that. Uh, back on over, taking a look at the financial statement reports, financial statement reports. Let's take a look at the income statement report for the month of February. I'm going to remove these zero balances and say, OK. So the income statement, we have the sales item up top. If we double click on uh, the sales item, then we're going to see that $500. That is the amount that we get to keep, not including the sales tax. Then the sales tax is going to be, of course, back on the balance sheet. If we go back on over to the balance sheet report, we see the sales tax. Uh, it's going to be in a payable account. So sales tax payable, that uh, 329 I won't go in it now, but it's going to be there. And then the inventory item is, is going down by the 400 So inventory goes down by 400 driven by the, the item. And the other side is on the income statement. So the income statement, if we jump to the income statement, then we have the cost of goods sold is being affected by the 400 as well. So that's the, the standard invoice transaction. Also note that if I go back to the report for the receivable, the receivable report here, and we were to refresh that now, then you could see that that 547.50 and the 250, it's matching out. Uh, here at this point in time and so the, the balance is correct but again these two aren't matched out if I was to go into this this uh, invoice it's going to be showing as unpaid even though I got 250 for it all right so how are we going to match that out so that's the problem so we're going to go back on over and say we need to match this out so let's go back on over here a couple ways you can do it now you might think of it this way if you just create the invoice you might create the invoice and then say I'd like to go back into it and say now view and edit the invoice and then actually open up the invoice that you're dealing with that's unpaid here and then you can pay it from this section right i could say i'm going to just choose this pay now section pay now and then match out what has been paid already which is going to be the uh, 250 250 and the 547, you're gonna match those out. Now, what happened when we do this, we, we basically entered a receive payment form. So, so for example, if I close this out, another method we get to the same area without recording that, I'm gonna close this out. To get to that same area, I'm gonna close this out. I'm going to close this out, is we just go to the receive money, and I'm gonna say receive payment. Now, we're not receiving payment. We already got the 250 before. We're just basically applying it out at this time. Now, we're not actually going to record it right now. I just want to show how it would be done, right? So we're going to go up top and we're going to say, this is Anderson. And so then we're going to say Anderson. Now, if they're going to pay us the rest, the deposit, the rest of this, you can see these two are matching out. The 250 matches out to that uh, 547.50. So when they pay the balance due, I would check both of these off. And then they're still going to owe us then the uh, 297.50. So when they pay us that, they're going to pay us the 297.50. I'll check both of these off and then we will have uh, completed this transaction. That'll show the invoice then having been paid after we record this transaction and, and that'll complete the process. So that's going to be how we finish this off. I won't do it at this point in time. I'm going to close this for now and we're going to say uh, the transaction edit has been changed. So I'm going to say no, don't record that at this point in time. 
And then of course the, the amount that is due at this point in time for Anderson is represented. We can run the balance. It's actually the 447 90, uh, 98. And that represents, like we say, both the transaction that we have thus far. So if we go to Anderson here, which includes the prepayment and the sale item, plus there was a transaction before that Anderson still, since still owed us for. So if we we're going to run a report for Anderson, how, to, how much does Anderson owe us? We can then take a look at this, and I'm going to bring this back to January. So we could see January's detail and say, okay. And uh, we see that uh, we have this uh, four, 448 98 that uh, was, never, was never paid here as well. So what's owed for Anderson, if we were going to pull out the old trusty calculator, the 448.95. And then, and then plus the 547.50 minus the 250 that was paid to us. That's what uh, is making up the 746.45 that is still due or owed to us from Anderson at this point in time.